Right now, should you buy a TV or wait? That is a tough question to answer any time of the year. So I'm gonna quickly go over the timing of buying a TV, no matter when in the year you ask it, and then specifically for right now, spring, summer of 2021, should you buy an old 2020 TV or get a newer model that's about to or has just come out? And I'll touch on all the major brands. Let's get it. What's up everyone, I'm B the Installer. I help people buy and install TVs and home theater products and it puts me in front of thousands of people asking thousands of questions that I gotta know the answers to. And I'm here because many people are nervous about buying a TV this time of year. Which time of year is it? It doesn't really matter. Any time of year. All year round someone is waiting for some, a holiday to buy a TV. But it's early spring and the new TVs are coming out soon. And the goal, as I stated, is to quickly go over the calendar for buying TVs and when you should hit the brakes on buying an older model and hold off until these new TVs come out, which is a discussion for us right now. And is it even necessary depending on which brand or type of TV you want? At the end, I'll be giving specific buying advice on the top TV manufacturers for this year and tell you whether I would get a new TV or buy last year's models. Make sure to smash the like button if you like this video, find it useful, and want other people to get practical buying advice on TVs and things like that. And make sure to subscribe if you ever plan on buying a TV, a soundbar, Wi-Fi, smart home tech devices, or if you just wanna know how to use those tech devices. And set the bell to all so you're notified when I upload a new video. So right now in 2021, the Super Bowl is upon us or maybe it's just passed. But Super Bowl is the time when your significant other didn't buy you a TV for Christmas and you just say F it and get one yourself. But is the Super Bowl really the best time of year to buy a TV? I mean, the short answer is of course, yes, any time of year is a good time to buy, right? If you need it, buy it. But pricing wise, is it a good time now or are you gonna miss out on new technology? I'll go into that in a minute, but because TVs are made on a yearly basis, it's relevant to know where we are in that cycle. So first, I'm gonna quickly go over the TV buying calendar. So TVs normally come out between April and June of each year, most TVs anyways. And of course, they're at their highest price points then. You're looking to see if the new models are worth the premium price you're definitely gonna to have to pay versus the technology year over year. And during the summer, prices don't change that much. I mean, maybe you can find some deals on Amazon day, but for the most part, the pricing advantages are going to be just before Black Friday. And I recommend kind of getting your ducks in a row before then, because in 2020, all of the major brands had discounts before Black Friday. Well, because Amazon day was actually in October this year, but even in 2019 and before, it's the same with new deals starting in early November. And I actually don't wait until Black Friday because things can be out of stock then and everybody's shopping. So get it before. And also Amazon and Best Buy and other companies offer extended return periods and even match their own pricing until like the end of January. So find a deal and buy it. And even if you don't get the best price, keep an eye out for the price to dip. And I'm actually gonna be going to Best Buy tomorrow to get $200 back on the LG C10 that I bought and surprised for a friend. Check that video out. He was definitely happier than most people thought. I think when given a new TV, people expect a grown man to break down in tears. Well, I guess most of us may. Anyways, we're past the holidays now. New models are coming out. CES was about a month ago and everybody is promising big things. So we kind of need to figure out who's likely to bring the goods and who just might be bringing more of the same and what you should do about it. So let's go over the brands and if I would buy a 2021 TV or if I would just buy a 2020 model. And I wanted to start with Samsung because I'm really hoping for some big things from Samsung. 2020 was a mess for most companies and Samsung was probably the most disappointing of all. Not only were most of the TVs in 2020 not better than 2019, but they were actually worse. Now hopefully Samsung has decided not to mail it in again in 2021 like they did in 2020 while we're waiting for the quantum dot LED or micro LED, which are not logical buys for most of us unless you have like $150,000 for their 110 inch micro LED. But it already looks more exciting with Samsung introducing mini LEDs in their top Neo QLED models. It's a mouthful. So TCL had already introduced mini LEDs in 2020, and though it slimmed down their TVs, overall they still weren't as good as other LEDs with local dimming and brightness. But having Samsung offer this technology is much more interesting to me because they have a better local dimming system, they have better viewing angles, better reflection handling, and so forth. 
So them really implementing mini LEDs to both thin down the panel and to control the backlighting to get it closer to an OLED is a legit improvement for Samsung. And in addition to the mini LEDs, which are only gonna be on the Neo QLEDs, the more expensive models, they're also gonna have the gaming hub now, which will tell you when you have features enabled like 4K at 120, VRR, and now they're gonna be offering FreeSync and G-Sync for 2021. And they're also gonna have 12-bit color on many of the models. Samsung is also gonna further improve their best-in-class remote by adding a solar cell to the new design so you can charge it by just letting it sit in the room and by USB. That's pretty cool. So if you're looking for a higher-end QLED for that bright and vibrant Samsung picture, but want a thinner TV with better black levels and better control, the dimming and blooming, and you have the cash and the time to wait, I would say let's see if their top models will be worthy of your money and if they're gonna rival OLEDs in 2021. But will there be any real benefits down the lineup? I'm not so sure about that. They will still have just one HDMI port with 2.1 capabilities, at least the 4K at 120, but I'm not sure that's a huge deal. And many of the TVs won't have the mini LED, so without that physical change in the TV or the added technology, I'm really just recommending that Samsung buyers outside of the top 8K and 4K new QLEDs to just go ahead and buy a 2020 model at a great price. The Samsung Q80T is one that I would target at a good price point. Some of you can get that at Costco as well under the 8QDT model number. So see if you can get that one because at a good price, it's a pretty good TV. LG has also had some noted changes and I'm not sure if we're gonna have a great year or just an average year for LG. So just a quick point on their new LED TVs. I'm not a big fan of the Nano TVs, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be any more impressed by their QNED TVs. Or wait, they can't use that name in the US because basically QNED is so close to QLED that they're not gonna be able to do it because Samsung is also trying to make a quantum dot TV, which is self-emitting. So QLED has already been kind of a wordsmith, and now we got LG trying to do the same thing, basically copying Samsung. Either way, I'm really not interested in LG unless we're talking about their OLEDs. And if I'm wrong about that, I'll stand corrected. But year over year, I appreciate the QLEDs of Samsung and Hisense and even LEDs like the TCLs, as well as the entire Sony lineup more than the LGs. So you're on your own if you wanna buy an LG LED because for me, it's not something I would buy to date and once you go OLED, you never go back, right? But the OLEDs from LG, yes please. The LG OLED that I'm truly excited about is the LG G1 Gallery Series, which is gonna be in the same sizes as the G10 at 55, 65, and 77 inch. But it's gonna have the Evo panel this year, which is expected to be about 20% brighter, give or take. And without getting too far into the specifics, it's looking like it's gonna be a really good reason to wait and buy the LG G1 versus buying the LG G10, which is in stores now, because the current G10 is basically the same picture quality as the C10. It's exactly the same, actually. Now, the only difference between the G10 and the C10 right now is that the C10 is thinner panel, but a fatter TV, and the G10 is very thin all the way through and can be pushed flat against the wall, kind of like the Samsung frame. But if you're really looking to get the best OLED this year from LG, you really should be looking at the G1 Gallery Series OLED as probably one of the best TVs of all of 2021. And the rest of the new LG lineup is a little bit tougher to be thrilled about. There is a C1 model replacing the C10 and then the A1 replacing the B10. So my thought process on this is that the C1 is not going to have the new Evo panel, probably because the popularity of the C10 and the C9 before it were so high, they likely feel that they're in a good spot just rebranding it in 2021. So basically it's the same as the last two years. And then to further separate the C and the B series they currently have, LG decided to make an entry level OLED called the LG A1. In 2021, the C1 will probably be the most mainstream OLED, and then the A1 will get you in the door for OLEDs at an entry level price. But the point of this video isn't just to tell you about the new TVs that are here, it's should you buy one now or should you wait? So the LG C9 was a very popular TV all of last year because it was actually a bit brighter than the LG C10, and it had the HDMI 2.1 capabilities at 48 gigabits per second. But the C10 was pretty much neck and neck with Sony A8H for the best TV in 2020, and it had HDMI 2.1 gaming. So as the C1 rolls out, I'm very confident in recommending the LG C10 for clients. I'd be confident in buying that older model because again, 
there isn't gonna be a change dramatic year over year, just like the C9 to the C10 and the C10 to the C1. But if you're able to get the LG B10, I would also recommend that. Currently, you're only saving like 100, 150 on the C10, but as many have stated, there's very little difference in those two models. So especially in a dark room, I could see the B10 being very popular. And as the 2021 TVs are all rolling out, if you can get the LG A1 at a very low price point, I would definitely do it. But check out a few different things. One, is the A1 gonna be better priced than the Vizio OLED or the LG B10? Because the complaints about the Vizio and the B10 and all OLEDs is the lack of brightness versus similar quality QLEDs. So if you wanna break into the OLED world, have that infinite contrast, a clean panel versus a lot of the QLEDs, this A1 could be worth waiting and seeing if you can get one for under a thousand for 55 inch. But let me reiterate, the prize is the Evo panel, the G1 OLED. And besides that, I'm very confident in recommending all of the 2020 TV still. Now for Sony, I have two main thoughts. I have good news and bad news. So which do you want first? Let's go with the good news. So the flagship Sony OLED looks to be a winner. I mean, the A90J in 55 inch, 65 inch, and then the massive 83 inch will have a market of people to buy it. I mean, it's a little expensive for most of us, but it's still exciting for Sony to be launching a new Master Series OLED with a brighter panel and HDMI 2.1. Well, I guess that's two things that I'm excited about for Sony in 2021. All of the TVs this year are gonna be having two of the HDMI 2.1s for gaming. So if you're in the market for a top Sony Master Series OLED, and if you wanna get that top size at 83 inch, or if you're just wanting to get a TV with HDMI 2.1, I would wait for the 2021 models. But let's get into the bad news. And that is, besides the split in their OLEDs making that new Master Series A90J and then the, the A80J, the rest of the Sony lineup looks to be much of the same. It looks like 2021 for Sony might be exactly what Samsung did in 2020. Literally nothing else to see here. And I say that because Sony is not including many LEDs into their TV. All they have talked about so far in 2021 is the new XR processor. And while Sony has been known for their processing and upscaling, and therefore they have that going for them with the XR hype, they're still gonna have a big fat LED TV that we've had for years. So is the new processor and the HDMI 2.1 alone gonna make you excited? Let me know in the comments. But personally, I'm not too stoked on that. And if I was in the market for a Sony LED TV, and I didn't care too much about gaming, like I really don't, I would just look for a deal on the Sony X950H, which was a pretty solid flagship LED in, from Sony in 2020. And even if you're looking at something like the X900H or even down the line, I mean, the next 900H still is waiting for the VR update and we don't know when we're gonna be getting it. But if all of the new Sonys in 2021 are gonna have HDMI 2.1, it should make all of the Sonys from 2020 quite inexpensive. Overall, if you're a Sony LED buyer, they should have rolled out HDMI 2.1 in 2020 and they should now be rolling out mini LED ready for 2021. So it's probably gonna be a pretty disappointing year for Sony. But TCL is doing mini LED for the second year. And I was pretty happy with the level of quality for like $650 that I paid for their 55 inch six series in 2020. But in the end, it wasn't as good as the Hisense H9G. And it was right there with the Sony X900H, which is why I kept that H9G from Hisense. And I'm pretty excited to put these two different brands in the ring with the top three regarding quality in 2021 and see how they'll fare. Will the new TCL with the mini LEDs get their local dimming in order and improve the viewing angles and the reflection handling? And will Hisense get HDMI 2.1 and eARC and a thinner QLED as well? Both will be very exciting and I'll definitely link some reviews as soon as I get them out there. So just a quick summary, if you're trying to figure out to buy or not, here's my line in the sand. If you want a larger, cheaper TV, you can find a lot of those now. The Sony X900H, the Sony X950H come in 65, 75, 85 inch, and the TCL 6 series has a 75 and 65. And all of the Samsungs have 75 and 85 inch for the most part. And I don't see a dramatic improvement in the lower priced TVs year over year. If you are in the market for a new high-end Samsung, I would hold on and see if the new Neo QLEDs are worth it with their new thinner design and the ability to control the lighting and the gaming hub. 
Since 2020 was so bad, it looks to be a good year for Samsung. But if you're an LG buyer, the LEDs don't excite me that much, and the LG C1 and A1 seem to be so similar to the C10 and B10 that I would not hesitate to recommend to people to buy the LG C10 or B10 now. It's likely that they haven't made massive improvements making the C10 and B10 irrelevant. So get the best prices you can get on those all the way into the summer. But if you're looking to get the top LG Gallery series, I probably would wait because the G10 is already expensive. So waiting to buy the new G1 with the Evo panel that looks to be a lot brighter than the G10, which was the same as the C10 last year, there should be a really good reason to wait and buy that G1 this year. If you're looking to buy a Sony, I would probably just get a 2020 model unless you're looking for one of two things. Either HDMI 2.1 for gaming, which all of the 2021 models will have, or if you're looking to get the A90J Master Series OLED, which is supposed to be a big upgrade over the A9G. And yes, the 83 inch model, which is gonna be like $8,000, should be pretty interesting. Yikes, it's pretty expensive. TCL, thinner TVs, awesome. And hopefully later in the year, Hisense and Vizio will be bringing more to the table as they both had great models in 2020. A Hisense H9G, the Vizio OLED, both of them great buys. I highly recommend you get those TVs, you can find it. Even the H8G is a very good buy. If you have any questions about what or when to buy outside of what I've offered here, let me know in the comments. Also, what specific TV or brand are you excited about? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to smash the like button, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, and just like that, you can be the installer.